Once we do this, there's no going back. Hey, mister? Look, I know you want your power regulator and all, but... I just gotta ask you. Do you understand what you're about to do? I don't think you should cut off Edgewater's power. I think it would be cruel. I I'm sorry. That just sort of came out all at once. Edgewater's hurting. We've been losing workers year after year, and corporate hardly ever sends replacements. There's barely enough Saltuna to fill our bellies anymore. But the town's got some good people in it. Decent, hard-working folk just living their lives the only way they know how. They don't deserve to be punished. Miss McDevitt's built something beautiful. Somehow, she's talked the ground into giving life again. It's plain to see she's made the Vale a better place. Fed the hungry, tended the sick. Gave a home to those that had none. But Miss McDevitt delights in Edgewater's suffering. She wants to hurt the town. Do you really want to be party to that kind of hatred? Well, that sure sounds like Mr. Thompson. If he was standing here, I imagine he'd remind us of how we're all one big, happy Spacer's Choice family. In Mr. Thompson's eyes, those deserters are still part of the Spacer's Choice family. The family must work together in order to survive. I hate to say it, but I think Mr. Thompson's got a point. Unless those deserters come back, Edgewater's as good as dead. Cutting off their power might be the only way. Sorry, I didn't mean to babble on like that. I just... I felt like I had to say something. Really? I mean, wow. Thanks, I... I'm glad the deserters are gonna be all right now they got power, but what about the town? All those people. Just gotta keep our heads up. The Adelaide was run. Oh, it's you. Reed told me I should be expecting you. He's inside. Anthracillin, huh? I appreciate your vigilance on behalf of Spacer's Choice. Your compensation?
You picked a fine time to visit, stranger. Mr. Thompson is aware. What are we supposed to do now? Got it. Heads down. You want to know what gets my bile churning? Edgewater has suffered a cavalcade of disasters, plague, marauders, desertion. Then you wandered in town. And I was so damn sure our luck was starting to turn. I never knew how right I was. Just answer one question for me. Why'd you do it? Is I right? I'm dying to hear this. Please, educate me. I see. All right, then. Glad you got that off your chest. Whatever you were hoping to find down here, I advise you to turn around and leave. I have got guards posted with orders to fire on you. All right, easy now. Let's not do anything we'll regret. I'll order my guards to stand down. Take what you came for and then leave us be. Stand down, all of you. We're done here. Yo! Hold it. What are you thinking? You're lucky I've already killed my... Zoe says she fought her way out of a marauder camp with her own bare hands. Do you hear that? That low, pleasant hum of electricity? It whispers across the veil like the winds of change. You've done well. I would have paid my last five bits to see the look on Reed's face when the last lamp in town burnt out and the cannery fell to silence. My son worked in that cannery. When the plague started coming, he was one of the first to fall sick. We had a store of medicine locked away, but Reed refused to treat him. Said my boy didn't deserve treatment. Said the medicine would have been wasted on him. So I buried my boy in the cemetery, gathered my belongings, and left. That's as much of the story as you need to hear. Time's come to look toward the future. We'll grow, I expect. A lot of workers out there with nowhere else to go. Not as many as you'd think. We're not about to let the whole town join our flock. Just the ones willing to renounce their corporate loyalties and live the way nature intended. I am curious. Why did you help us? You don't know who we are. You don't owe us a thing. The plant's crawling with mechanicals, so it stands to reason you risked your life. You're not quite like anyone else I've met. You haven't had your consciousness programmed by the board. You're welcome among us if you're ever so inclined.
Is this your ship? Oh, my star, she is just so handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship, working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. I have imagined it, but until you came along, I never thought I had the choice. I want to ask you something, and you can say no. But can I come with you? And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. What do you think? Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. Captain? I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a Captain. Some... Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. What can I do for you, Captain? Do you know how to install a power regulator? Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you. Yes, you caught me ruminating again. Guilty as charged. What's a... I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some years ago. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. That's a good question. We should start on the Groundbreaker. All I need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Thank you, Captain. Where are we headed? What can I do for you, Captain? 
All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing, I assure you. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. You need to get to Stellar Bay on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys called Kelly. Without a skip drive, good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her sp Excellent. I'll By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits, first-generation technology, you see, but promising. Very simply, the holographic Shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Best used in moderation. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. <laughs> A change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy cereal? What inattentive and brainless guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise? The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. Science, that's how. Excellent. 
And remember, don't trust the board. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. You might want to consider changing your clothes more often.
Welcome back, Captain. How can I be of assistance? The unit is a cleaning SAM. Hawthorne brought it on board some cycles ago, I'm sure with the intent to modify it, but I've never seen it up and running. Alex likely recorded progress notes detailing his efforts to modify SAM. If you check the terminal in your captain's quarters, we may be able to determine what work remains in order for SAM to properly operate. Take care. Nation reached the groundbreaker. Hey Cap, can we talk? <laughs> 